Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here, and I'm here today with both the Casio Privia PXS1000 over here and the PXS3000 over here. These are Casio's two newest introductions. It's their latest design. Everything was designed from the ground up. Now, a while back, I did a video reviewing the Casio Privia PXS1000. So I'm assuming you've watched that video. And if you haven't, please watch that. And you'll, I'm basically taking over from there to explain the 3000. We're gonna go over the differences only, okay? There's gonna be a more thorough review of the 3000 in a separate video coming up in the future. So the differences between these two. Now, the Casio PXS1000, it's an entry-level piano, and so is this, by the way. Um, you could even call it mid-level, but for what you get for the price, it certainly is a huge bang for the buck. $599 US for the PXS1000 and $799 US for the PXS3000. And the key action on these are phenomenal don't take my word for it go to your nearest local retailer and try this out or even check on the forums everybody is loving and raving this action now this is the slimmest piano on the market right now it's under 25 pounds and to top everything off it is battery operated each one of these can operate on six AA batteries, and it's got its own built-in amp and speakers. It's not much, but it's eight watts per channel, total of 16 watts. Now, here's the differences. The PXS1000 is designed strictly for pianists, nobody else. Now you're gonna have the same key action on both. It's the same case on both. It's the same amp and speakers on both. So that being the case, if you were strictly a pianist and you're not gonna play anything else, maybe a couple of organs or uh, electric pianos, and that's about it, then go with the PXS1000. This has 18 different sounds to it, whereas the PXS3000 has 700 different sounds to it, and they are all first-rate sounds. The chip that's in here is, if they're calling it the new air, it should be called the air 2, because it's a combination of their air chip, acoustic intelligent resonator, and the new AIX chip. So you're getting the best of both worlds here. Here's something really cool I want to show you. Let me just... Okay, I have a microfiber cloth right here. This is what you would clean this high luster surface with. And notice that because these are touch sensitive buttons over here, which are based on your human finger with heat and all kinds of stuff like that, you can clean this without pressing any buttons. <laughs> That's so cool. So while you're playing, you can actually clean this. I mean, I don't know why you would do that, but you don't have to turn it off, in other words, to clean it. That is fantastic. Now, for the sounds in this one, basically, there is no screen on the PXS1000. There's no display screen at all. Changing sounds over here uh, requires holding down one of these touch sensitive buttons and pressing one of these 18 keys on the bottom. Each one is assigned to a different sound. But in the meanwhile, the piano is the main thing. So whether I'm playing it on that or on the 1000. Both the same. So it's the same thing. Now, changing to a different kind of instrument is going to involve holding down one of the buttons and 
as I press a key here, you're hearing what instrument that would be. So if I want strings, and if I wanted just go back to my uh, piano now to change to a different instrument on the PXS 3000 it's a little bit more involved I mean you've got all these 700 tones so basically you've got different categories listed over here piano electric piano organ strings pad and others so it's broken down into these six categories so basically, if you want something in the piano group, you switch to the piano group. And as we hit these, you can see what they are. Grand Piano Bright. Mellow. Stage Piano. Rock Piano. So anyway, as you keep going, you can go through all the different pianos here. Here's a honky tonk. Like those out of tune pianos you find in the saloons in a movie or whatever. Now, if I go to, let's say, the organ category. Now I'm here with a JS organ. if I want a pad and you can basically scroll through the whole thing now 700 that's a lot to go through so they give you a way of storing these things into different banks you've got 24 banks each bank has four areas so 24 times 4 is 96 you've got 96 places that you can store your sounds if you like something and you want to set everything up you've got a layer or a split which also by the way is easy to do here uh, you're all set with that now as for changing sounds here you see that when I hold down a key and press something it gives you a basically a sample of what you have selected but basically with the 1000 you're going to need to print out these three pages here because until you memorize what you're going to use the most basically you're operating in the blind without a screen so this tells you if you hold down the grand piano button plus whatever key and they're marked to indicate what their function is you get stuff like uh, touch velocity sensitivity Whereas over here, you go through a menu. This is your typical menu-based system. So if I want a light keyboard touch, basically I'm gonna hold down the grand piano key and hit this key right here. And, and let's go back to piano here. All right, and if I want a light touch here, You'll see that you know, I'm holding down this function key. This gets me into all the different places where I can change stuff. And I see the first thing is sound. I don't want that. So I go to the next. That's keyboard. So I know touch sensitivity is part of keyboard. So I'm going to enter the keyboard. And here's where I can change. It sets normal right now. And I want to change this to light too. Because that's what I'm comfortable with. So there's on this you can hold down the grand piano key and hit a, one of the keys or the electric piano button and one of the keys or the sound more button and one of the keys or the function button and one of the keys or the playback button and one of the keys or you can change the tempo where you hold down a button and you're entering a three key code anywhere from 0 to 999 I guess so essential to have this 
with the PXS 1000, at least until you're familiar with everything. You may only use a handful of functions and you'll memorize that quite quickly. Whereas this one, you don't need a manual. I mean, if you want to get more in depth, yeah, you might need the manual. But here, everything is on the display. And this is a graphic display. And as far as the character stuff of, on that, it's the three line character display. So this is cool. And the other thing about having these touch sensitive buttons uh, is when you're at a gig and it's dark, you don't have to worry about reading what's on top of that button as you do with previous models of the Privia. Everything is lit for you. So you can clearly see all the different choices that you have over here. So let's go on with um, more of the differences between these two. As for the front panel on each one, you'll see that they each have this knob, that's a volume knob, and a power switch. And that's all you see until you basically turn the board on. That's when you can see all of the lit touch sensitive buttons. Also, you have two programmable or assignable knobs on the PXS 3000 as well as a pitch bend mm -hmm. wheel. All right, and this is really cool. You've got a lot of stuff here on the PXS 3000 that for $200 more just really blows me away. It's not that much more and you get like more than twice the value of your money with this. I mean, the 700 sounds alone. Now, going into the back panel on each one of these, we'll start with the PXS 1000, and that has basically damper pedal input, and that's the on-off type of damper pedal. So any damper pedal will work. Make sure you get a universal one so you can use it on any kind of keyboard if you move it to another. That way you've got a switch for polarity on the other side. Uh, next to that is a proprietary um, connection. And that proprietary connection is for an optional triple pedal that you can buy from Casio. Now in the past, that triple pedal only was part of a stand that you had to buy. And it only worked on as far as using it with that stand. You couldn't take that with you unless you want to disassemble the stand and take it with you on a gig. Now, this time, they have a triple pedal that's portable. It just plugs in. Now, it is proprietary, so you're not going to be able to buy someone else's triple pedal, but it controls all the functions you'd expect with a triple pedal, and it does do half damping pedaling, which is also cool, and the other pedals are programmable. All right, and the next connection over that, you've got your standard left and right quarter inch line output jacks, left being mono, and when you use them both, you've got stereo. So nothing new there. Uh, you've got the 12 volt DC input so that you can use the supplied AC adapter with. But again, this does run on batteries, so very cool. And then you've got the USB-B type connection which is the type that plugs into a host. A host being your computer or your smartphone or a tablet or whatever, but a host. All right, the PXS 3000 has everything I just mentioned, but it also has an expression pedal input, which is rare for something in this price range. So you can use an expression pedal to control like volume on a, on a uh, layer, control one of the volumes, either a control the volume of one part of the layer, or you can use it for so many other functions as well. And also, it has a USB-A connection. So you can take something like a USB thumb drive or flash memory or whatever and plug that into there. So when you're recording something, and this does have the ability of recording stuff, you can record it right to that USB thumb drive and then move it to your computer or take it with you somewhere else, whatever you want to do with it. Speaking of recording, the PXS 1000 has a two track recorder, one song. So one track could be your left hand, and then while you're playing that back, you can record another track, your right hand, which is a great way of practicing. Or 
you can play a whole piece uh, with piano or whatever instrument, guitar, as part of your track one. And while you're playing that back, you can add some other instrument for track two, so you get more of a song there. On the PXS 3000, it has a three-track recorder and up to five songs. So in addition to the two tracks, you can add a third track, which is also pretty cool. Now, one thing I'm not clear on, um, the PXS 1000 is supposed to be a replacement for the PX 160, right? And the PXS 3000 is supposed to be a replacement for the PX 350. And while there's improvements over those, and you get a lot more bang for your buck with this, if they're replacing it, you would think that things that were on the previous models would also be on here too, but that's not the case. For example, the PX350 had the five pin DIN standard legacy MIDI jacks, and you don't have that on here. Instead, it's all MIDI over USB instead. And also, it had a 17 track recorder in the uh, PX350, a 17 MIDI track recording. This only has, like I just said, three tracks and up to five songs. So that's kind of a difference there. And for people that were using that feature, that's gone in the new models. So I'm not sure why they did that, but they did. And the 96 setups that or registrations that I was talking about with this, there's none of that in the PX S1000. So basically, you turn the power off and uh, everything you did is wiped out. Uh, but you have an auto resume feature that you can use. So you can save whatever the keyboard layout was that you had um, just before you turn the power off. And most of it, but not all, would be saved for the next power up. Also on the PXS 3000, you have 310 music presets. So really popular music, and at least for the past 50 years, you got some presets for that, which is really cool. Uh, you've got 12 types of auto harmonize, and you have 100 arpeggiator types as well. Okay, now both of these, as I mentioned, can run on six AA batteries, but there's a difference. The PXS 1000 will give you up to four hours of battery play at half volume, which is pretty cool. I mean, that's that's great. If you're a pianist and you're taking this with you busking, you can do that. You know, for a larger crowd, you'll probably need something like a, a Roland KC-110 battery-operated amp um, and speakers, so you're all set there for bigger gigs. But... The same six AA batteries in the PXS 3000 at half volume will only last you two hours. And this is according to the user manual. It's, it's spelled out in each one. So I would assume that because of the display and the more lights and probably some other factors as well, it's going to use a little bit more power. But twice as much power i mean four hours versus two hours that's twice as much power so just keep that in mind if you're going to use this for busking or anything else like bring this over to a party and just play off in the corner somewhere you're only going to have two hours bring fresh battery replacements with you okay very important and there's probably more differences that um exist that I haven't mentioned in this video, but that is the bulk of the differences. And believe me, the $200 price difference, well worth it in the PXS 3000. Very well worth it. But if you're just a pianist and that's it, maybe a couple of uh, electric pianos, maybe some organs, harpsichord, go with just the PXS 1000. Very cool. So hope this has helped you out. There'll be more videos in the future. Uh, we'll be doing a more thorough review of the PXS 3000 soon. So stay tuned. Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.